When we think about Greek theatre, we think about famous playwrights like Sophocles, Europhides and Aristophanes. But many scholars argue that Roman theatre borrowed heavily from Greek theatre. So in this presentation, I'm going to be comparing Greek theatre to Roman theatre. The origins of Greek drama. So in Northern Greece, a cult arose that worshipped the Greek god Dionysus, the god of wine and fertility. The cult practiced ritual celebrations, which may have included liberation, promiscuous activity, human and animal sacrifices, and comedic storytelling. The cult inhibited dancing and emotional displays that created an altered mental state called ecstasies, which is also where we get the word ecstasy, which is a drug. This ecstasy was considered a form of purification, whereby if anyone had any sins like lust, greed or pride, after they watched the play, they were purified from all of that. So the ritual quickly spread across Greece and became a formalized thing. The structure of Greek drama. So in Greek drama, there is a prologue, which is the introduction of the play and setting. This was very important because in Greek dramas, they didn't have any props or backdrops to work with. So a lot was left up to the audience's imagination. After that, we get the chorus, which was the songs, choral odes and hymns sung religiously. Now, these songs were used to worship the god Dionysus, whereby many men were dressed up as goats and surrounded the statue of Dionysus. Now, that's where we also get the word tragedy, which means goat. Finally, we get the exados, which is the exit. It's also the conclusion of the play, whereby the tragic hero would meet its end and we would learn a lesson from it. Greek theater construction. As you can see behind me, there is a Greek theater, which is very beautifully made. During this time, major theaters were constructed notably the Theatre of Delphi and the Theatre of Dionysus in Athens. The word theatre derives from the Greek word theatron, which referred to the wooden spectator stands erected on the hillsides. Greek theatres could seat approximately 15,000 people, which is quite a lot. And many of them at the back rows could not hear or see the actors perform, which is why they would have to use exaggerated masks. Now, these exaggerated masks help the actors to project their tiny movements and expressions which could not be seen by the audience further back. Costumes had to be larger than life so that it could be seen better. And these showcased the characters that the actors were trying to portray. So for example, if I were someone playing Oedipus in the play, I would get the mask and I would perform. Please do not smite me with thine sword. Or if I was a male character trying to play, play a, a female character, I would get the female mask and use that to portray the female character. I'm a lady. <laughs> okay, so anyway, only three actors were allowed on stage at any given time. So this allowed for each actor to play multiple characters. The costumes. Roman costumes mirrored the Greek traditional garments, where actors wore long robes called chiton, which were colored to denote the characters and their rank. So for example, the emperor would be wearing red because that symbolized um, authority. Stock characters used tunics and cloaks, which were also larger than life, as said before. The masks became abolished later on in Greece where Romans performed without them. This was probably because the amphitheatres at the time were al allowing for more sound to be projected throughout the audience. The difference between Greek and Roman design in theatres. Much of the architectural influence of the Romans came from the Greeks, and theatre structural design was no different from other buildings. However, Roman theatres have specifically different um, designs such as being built upon their own foundations instead of the earthenworks or hillsides. So the Greek theatre 
who were often built on hillsides and not enclosed at the front, where spectators could see the outside world instead of a fixed backdrop. Roman theatres, however, had independent structures like the Colosseum, where they were enclosed on all sides. Now, Roman theatre were types of performances held in both Greek and theatre and Roman <coughs> and in Rome, sorry. And they were quite similar, and many people associated the Roman and Greek dramas because they were practically the same. However, instead of just translating them from Greek to Latin, they were also translated to match the cultures of Rome. Rather than to uh, emulate them, they imitated them. So these speculated cultural change. In conclusion, although many aspects of Rome was borrowed from Greek theatre, Roman culture highly influenced many changes in both physicalities and technicalities in theatre. Roman theatre is recognizably similar to today's drama and theatre in that it didn't just flow with religious themes like um, the Greek gods, but they also fell into alignment with the need for entertainment such as romance and um, comedy of today, you know, like we get movies like um, Hangover, uh, Blended, but that's my favorite movie. Anyway, therefore, we can conclude that Roman theater was the beginning of modern theater after evolving from its Greek origins. Thank you.